everybody. This is Magnum Pi. I'm here with Teku Golgotha of the High Low and Dark Templar, and we are Initiative Zero, and this is our Rifts game, uh, The Face of Evil, which is, if you don't know it, it's a classic Rifts adventure. We haven't actually got to it yet just because we're setting the groundwork, but we're so close to, to really delving into it. Um, how are you guys doing there? I'm doing great. I'm really sore because I'm old. I'm older than you. It's it's been a pretty uh, pretty exhausting week at work, so I'm excited to just kind of relax and play some games. Oh, I hear you, yeah, right? I hear you. Yeah, cool. Well, I hope that those of you that are joining uh, and watching our cast here that uh, you're also ready to have some fun. Um, if you like us, always hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, hit the bell so you know when the next episode comes out. So. Uh, just to recap, I guess, you guys uh, had just handily dealt with a rhino buffalo that had unfortunately Maybe killed... you guys. Yeah, who am I calling you guys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mean uh, you guys? Yeah. You four? Uh, Backup dancers? <laughs> yeah. You four had uh, handily dealt with that rhino buffalo and that had killed a, a farmer and threatened a family and uh, you are pretty much in the region lauded as uh, as heroes. There, The rumor goes around that there's a cyber knight and a line walker and a magic dog uh, and some dude from Laszlo. They don't really yeah, necessarily... Someone who needs to wear sunglasses more often. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, the, the cyber knight and the ley line walker are, are visible by their, by their garb. And of yeah. course, Lex is a dog, so they, they can see that, but... Um, it quickly rumor goes around that you're a powerful psychic there, Senate. And, um, yeah, uh, Trapper's Cove affords you guys, uh, you're always welcome at Trapper's Cove now. Um, you can stay there as needed. They'll always feed you that sort of thing. And it's a kind of a nice central location. Again, it's just, uh, Northwest of the, uh, settlement of, of Relic, a city which used to be Hamilton. Um, and, uh, just near the ruins of what used to be Guelph. And you guys have heard that the, uh, the ruins of Guelph contain a nexus, uh, not attached to that nearby ley line as Portland found out that ley line is just a single ley line, but there are two intersecting ley lines in Guelph or what used to be Guelph, the ruins, they call them. And there's rumor of a, of a monster there that, uh, the local people, the local farmers in the area and the like will leave a tribute at the edge of, at the edge of the ruins. There's almost like a little altar there that they've kind of stacked up rocks and just leave, you know, if they, if they're hunting nearby, they will leave a chunk of meat there, or they will put things of value to them there. Um, just as a way of almost a superstition. Um, yeah, and really, uh, people are coming to you guys with their woes as as rumor floats around of your um, taking care of that rhino buffalo, and that's kind of uh, where we we are. If you if you guys are down any PPE or ISP, you can bring that back up to full. You uh, yeah, you've had some time to rest and explore around over the last. Uh, we'll say a few weeks anyway. It's probably getting into fall now and the harvest. People have probably come to you for help to to bring in the harvest, which uh, usually it's like back in the day, right? Back in you know 19th century, it took everybody to kind of come together in the community to bring in the harvest. And since you're around, they'll they would love to have your help if you're willing to offer it. So I don't know what would you guys be doing. I would definitely be helping. I big smile on my face. I enjoy the kind of physical manual labor. Cool. Reminds me of home. There you go. I'm getting, but uh, you know, trying to keep my my appearance covered um, in the event that there's any coalition spies or anything like that around. Yeah, yeah. You're still, yeah, you're still a bit paranoid for sure. You're. Um... You know, you are you stick into the wilderness though, which is which is smart. Yeah. Senate Portland. Yeah, I've uh I've got a a bike. I'm pretty sure they have a cart. That seems like a useful way of bringing in an incredible amount of rain or prop. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, you know what? I'm going to be healing some of the people who may have like sores on their hands or just achiness in general from doing all this manual labor. That's cool. Yeah. So putting your magic to use, just that light wounds, right? Making life a little bit yeah. easier for them. That's cool. That yeah. That's good. Awesome. So, um, so you guys are, are obviously seen as an asset and, uh, we'll put it now kind of, uh, kind of late October. Uh, it's, it's dark outside. It's getting colder. Um, but not super cold. It is still Southern Ontario after all. And, um, but you're in the lodge at Trapper's Cove, kind of back where you first met and the four of you who again, meet, hap you know, by happenstance once in a while as you cross paths in this area, going off and doing the things that you do. But this is kind of a sort of central meeting place and a rather popular stop off because it had, does have that repair shop and the like. And uh, you all happen to be at, uh, at the lodge of Trapper's Cove uh, on this particular October evening. And um, yeah, there's stew aplenty for you and uh, you're sitting around exchanging stories and the like. What do you guys talk about? What are you doing? Well, I guess talking about what we, if this is the first time we've been back together in a bit, talking about what we've been, what we've been up to, essentially. Yeah, you exchange those stories, <laughs> and the conversation will shift into kind of plans, as opposed to what you have done, what you will do. Right. So, what, so have you, what, what have you guys been hearing about the region? Any grumblings? Well, you know, there's that story about the uh, the ruins. Uh, apparently, there's a, a what is it, a rift in that or a, a, a nexus? Nexus. 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 Yeah, nexus. Yeah. 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 I'm planning to check that out, anyways. How are you? We might have I come yeah. along with you. Uh, sure. You're my friend. Oh, thank you. I'm curious. I mean, they they say there's uh, creatures in there that are harming them, so I'd like to see if there's anything we could do. Well, are they harming them, or are they? Well, that's the story, right? I mean, they're 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 claiming that you know people go in there, you know, they're they're through. It's superstition, right? I mean, I don't think anything's actually happened. I haven't heard anything happening, but they they leave offerings at like uh, some sort of like altar there uh, to satiate them, so that they don't come and harm them. Uh, for all I know, that there there's nothing there, for example. But I think it's important to take a look. But I don't know. This is just me, but. If that keeps the potential threat contained, is that really so high a price to pay, given the state of things? And I'll just gesture vaguely because it's rifts and everything's blown out and exploded. Well, I'm not there to kill anything. I'm just there to explore it. I want to look at the nexus. Well, I mean, I'm not there to kill anything, but if anything's harming human people, I mean, I want to make sure we could, I could deal with them, right? But, you know, it, it, for all we know, there's nothing there in the first place. But I'm curious. It's harming humans is they just, just don't go around there. I kind of agree with uh, with Senate here where it's, you know, if the thing is staying contained in that area, why don't we just leave it there contained? Like, well, I, I, I appreciate wanting to explore, but picking a fight just to pick a fight. Oh, no, it's not a matter of picking a fight. It's just simply a matter of seeing what's there. If anything is harmful... You know, deal with it. If not, then let it be. Cool. I just want to interject for one second, just to kind of give you and our viewers uh, a better idea of what the world of rifts is like. So um, there has been an apocalypse. Uh, your players don't necessarily, or your characters rather, don't necessarily know how long ago it was. But as players, it was about 300 or some odd years ago that this happened. And the world has kind of healed and overgrown back into a wilderness. So it's not like you find a lot of um, post-apocalypse, like Terminator, like blown out war and stuff like that necessarily. Um, it's more that um, that uh, there is destruction, but it's now also become overgrown by, by wildlife and plant and things like that. So it's more kind of the world being reclaimed as it is uh, a hellish wasteland if I can just kind of make sure we got that sort of image in mind 
um mm. you know kind of uh there's a needing to need to clear new farmland as as more people restart to re-inhabit and reclaim things there are areas of the world that are these bombed out um you know urban wastelands um with collapsed buildings and shattered graves of uh, things something like uh the ruins of chicago or the ruins of manhattan places like that that were extremely densely um urbanized places uh even there you do have again plants overgrowing and regrowing but you get more of that kind of level of destruction whereas other places are just that the people died and things fell into ruin um and monsters moved in sort of thing so um yeah just uh it wasn't the apocalypse wasn't brought about by massive scale war let's say but by rather other destructive things so anyway that's just kind of more flavor and background but go ahead continue so, so my my primary interest is just seeing if there's a danger there and if there's no danger there then you know the exploration itself is uh, adventure enough still sounds like picking a fight i i don't go out of my way to pick fights i i genuinely don't <laughs> okay i will indicate when, I, I will indicate when we're picking fights though <laughs> fair enough if you're game if you're if you're game for it i'm absolutely good to go exploring excellent i mean the harvest was so uh engaging it was great wasn't it it was great to have your get your hands dirty like you're from laszlo like you have you ever have you ever been in the field before so the way that my character token is looking at you in real life <laughs> very much the way that he's looking at you now you see and i've just got a big smile because i'm just you know ge i'm being very genuine like like, like 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 i used to do this as a kid like my i grew up on the far a farm just outside of laszlo so this is like going home again and i'll just no we didn't no. do that in laszlo that i ever saw well, not in laszlo but outside regardless i mean it was a, it was a great experience hope you enjoyed it i mean it it wasn't the worst thing no it's, it's there's something something about honest day's work that really makes you feel good usually honesty mm. anyways let's go where are you leaving now it's night yeah it's night time Oh, yeah, let's eat. Yeah, I'll eat. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of that typical end of harvest time. Um, people are getting gathering together, so the community does come together. Again, it's a small place, um, but uh, somebody has a, a stringed instrument of some sort, guitar or banjo or something like that, and there's somebody, or a fiddle, or somebody's got a, f a little whistle or flute of some sort, and... Um, folkish music gets strung up in the in the lodge house and um you know the the fermented goods start to flow the beer most often is what's going on here and uh people are kind of having a bit of a, a sort of end of the harvest celebration um and people are slapping you on the back talking to you as well um and uh one one man uh, comes over to you and has sort of overheard your conversation and uh, you recognize him. He's one of the local uh, farmers uh, from around here that you've gotten to know. We'll call him, oh, I don't know. His name will be... Jim Bob. We'll just go with Bob. That will save Jim for somebody else. Um, mm. There we go. That, I don't want to waste the names. So it's, yeah, it's we Bob. Spread, we spread the good stuff around. <laughs> That's right. I Gordo would have been a good name. Gordo. There you go. That's his brother. This is Bob. And, um, Bob, it's gosh, it's going to be the cast of Sesame Street. Okay. So, um, so Bob basically says, uh, he's there, uh, so, uh, it's the end of harvest. And, uh, I heard you guys talking about the ruins. Um, my family and a couple of the other families have a bit of a tradition whereby we bring some of our harvest to the ruins and uh and just make a bit of an offering there to uh to make sure that everything goes well for the winter mm -hmm. uh, what kind of offering is this your food offering uh, yeah yeah 
we've uh we raised up a calf and uh we've got a well we got the some of the the pumpkins and and uh squash and and some of the some some baked goods and things like that that we bring up and when you place it at the uh, place that do, do, do the do you check to see if it's been taken the next day or within a few days and he looks at you like you're crazy his eyes get big he shakes his head no god no we just leave it yeah. and uh so far so good but um mm. yeah it'd be good if uh you know if we could i don't know i guess have some protection oh, absolutely it'd be great if uh yeah if we could get you guys to accompany us we've gone it alone the past few years but uh well, we've heard things echoing in the ruins, and, uh, well, well, we'd just rather be safe. So, has anything actually ever happened? Because I, I, I've heard from others say that there's creatures in there that are dangerous, that, that, you're, that there's, some, uh, there's a, 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 a real threat uh, that people are aware of. Or is it, is it, is it for certain? Well, uh, some of the farms closer to the ruins, uh, the livestock's been completely gutted and, uh, the carcasses just, the, the guts are gone. So carcasses there, no sign of the entrails. Uh, so if, if you're saying this, I'm looking at Senate kind of raising my eyebrow like, uh, huh? See you? See what I said? And, uh, yeah. And, uh, sometimes, uh, the uh well when we bale the hay and and the like the bales will be just completely destroyed and the hay scattered about the field um yeah there's uh well so there's the potential for predators and i don't even i don't know what i've never heard of a threat that goes around unbaling hay and i'll look back at No. Back at Sir Luke and be like, this must be truly, truly a, a regional threat. Um, well, I've got two so oh. can I can I roll to see if there's something that rings a bell? Like not obviously like you know bail unroller, but just the uh, the no, I want you to do bail unroller. <laughs> well, okay, sorry, Portland, you were going to say something. No, it was fine. No, no, no. Okay. okay. Um. So yeah, it's it it's more what the, what raises your suspicions there, Sir Luke, among your skills. What sort of thing would you think? You know, that's it's not it's not we just start going down the list of skills rolling until we find something that right. that clicks. So what are the what are the sorts of skills that you think uh, that were like this sort of description? Does it trigger you to look, when you look at your list of skills? Well, uh, I mean, like like, saying, like lore, like the uh, monster. It sounds like what kind of monster could it be? So, yeah. So I, if it sounds like a monster to you, then uh, yeah. yeah, you could, you can give a roll on monster lore, right? For sure. If you think that that's if there's some sort of thing that you want to check out, I will do that. Oops, that's not it. Oh no, it is. That's it. Yeah. You just it. you just aren't successful. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. You don't know of. You don't know of any hay debailing monsters at all. Curious. Well, I mean, personally, I'm happy to escort you if you think there's a genuine danger. Um, I mean, I appreciate you being forthcoming with what we've asked. If there's anything that we probably should know that you know, we did now's the time to tell us i mean otherwise yeah i guess we're here to help well thanks uh we're gonna head out uh well we want to leave kind of early tomorrow to uh to make sure we got enough daylight to get us out to the ruins and place the the offering and, and back so Sounds good. We'll be up early as well. Yep. Yeah. 
Why we need to be early? Sorry. Daylight. <clears throat> we can do like midday, right? Like, I'm gonna get absolutely wasted. Well, I mean, you still can. It's just you know, it's it's you know, gonna be early morning, but you know, or it cannot be a late early morning. It can be like a late morning. The early the bed, early to rise. Well, it's but just I mean, always it's... better. It's just always better if we head out early. That way, if we run into something unexpected, I mean, not everything's uh, necessarily monstrous and evil, right? He says, but there's bears. There's, you know, there's other things that, uh, you know, you, it could be a fallen tree that we got to move out of the way cut up something like that it's it's uh it's not like there's a highway heading to the ruins so we just always okay. better better to head early and come back early than to head out late and potentially get stuck in the dark okay but uh but drink up he says uh enjoy yourself do. you look like you could probably handle whatever is in the bottom of your glass thanks yeah, famous last words. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. All right. All this right. It's going to be fun. I always enjoy these kind of things. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you drink heavily, do you, there? Yeah. All right. I do. Uh, I'm going to rain mine. I'm going to rain mine in a bit and appreciate the fact that out of the four of us, including a literal golden retriever one of us acts much more like an excited golden retriever than the actual golden retriever <laughs> we going we going ride go for a ride go for a walk oh go for a walk get my sword go for a walk all right and Lex, find a wench. Lex is quiet find. you're looking for a wench yeah, like I'm, I'm... <laughs> I'm I'm just kind of wanting to uh avoid avoid confrontation, all of that kind of stuff. Like you know, I never know who's who's coming to offer deals and things, so I don't want to kinda of get involved in in that still a little bit unsure about some of the people in the community. So um kinda of when he came up and was talking, I would just kinda of be, you know, off to the side trying to, you know, put my hood up, that kind of stuff. Yep. For sure. Yeah, you're still kind of keeping. Let, let, let these all go, let these guys all do the talking with the with the common folk and kind of keep keep the people that I trust and the pe the people that I don't trust necessarily yet farther away. All right, cool. Well, Portland's drinking a lot. I'm well, going to drink a fair amount, but enough for that. Not going to cause me problems. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I can take more than most people so how much do you drink there portland are you getting to the point where you're like falling down drunk or you know i want to be conscious enough to find an easy wench to lay with later that's all okay cool yeah pretty much it well, like gordo <laughs> if gordo's a wench <laughs> i'm hitting that <laughs> okay yeah so, after about nine drinks, you are good and drunk there, Portland. Um, minus 24% to all of your skills. Speed reduced. Initiative attacks per melee. All reduced by half. Combat bonuses. You are... You're not falling down, but you are uh, visibly, visibly tanked. Sir Luke, you're an Atlantean... Um, you can drink twice as much before you feel any negative effects. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you have, uh, and I would, I would I'm argue. What's that? I'm also huge. That's part of the reason. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like all true Atlanteans, you are monstrously big. Um, uh, Lex, you are. Uh, you have a supernatural sort of endurance based on your genetic engineering. Uh, you can drink quite a bit as well. So, uh, but, uh, I, I still don't think that I would. No, not saying um, that you again. would. Yeah. But you could, that's all I'm saying. Just so you're aware. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be good. Portland say versus non-lethal toxin. 
So it's it's just underneath your combat at the very bottom. We're out here drinking wilderness shine. I love it. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. That's awesome. This was the fast ferment. That's (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This was the stuff they knew they were never gonna bake into bread, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Not toxins, not lethal, you said, right? Non lethal toxin. Any modifiers? Any modifiers? No. No. All right. So you you will be hung over the next day. Um, so uh, in the morning you will not be uh, at your best. These penalties will last the first few hours of the daytime. You will be uh, not doing so hot, but um, but you had a good time. And uh, when you wake up, when I look, yeah, when I, when I look over, when I wake up, what do I see? Uh, she wasn't that bad actually. Um, Fantastic! It's all worth it. Yeah, you're, of course you're on the floor of the, or no, you get a room now, right? You guys all get a room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, you don't remember much about it, <laughs> but you, but you're happy that you woke up beside who you did. All right, uh, Senate, were you drinking or? Uh, knowing that we were going out, I'd rein it in. My brain is my weapon, so having it, you know, lightly pickled seems bad plan. Yeah, yeah, cool. And Lex, you said no. You're just kind of laying low. All right, but you you all eat, you all ate your fill. That's for sure. Um, you get up, uh, Bob and his crew, his brother Gordo and friends. Um, basically, they they give a knock on the back doors of the of the lodge where you guys where you guys have your rooms and um it's before it's it's basically the crack of dawn they've got a wagon loaded up i've been awake for an hour exercising of course you have chin-ups outside on the (laughs) i've been awake for two and a half minutes shaking my head (laughs) (laughs) all right yeah they give i I went outside to take a piss all right yes (laughs) There we go. <laughs> when everybody rolls up with the with the wagon full of stuff, and uh, yeah, tied to the wagon is a a young uh, well is a is a is a calf basically that's been uh, ready to ready to be slaughtered. I guess at this point it wouldn't be a calf, but a, a cow ready to be slaughtered. They they got a horse drawing the the cart. Um, they're all kind of ready, kind of wearing traveling clothes and yeah. So you guys are woken, kind of get ready, Portland. Um, your tongue sticks to the roof of your mouth. Hey Portland, how you feeling? You okay? Yeah. I'm going to have a little bit of a headache, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little sore, but, uh, I'll be fine. All right. Yeah. Well, are we uh, are we bringing the bikes today, or are we slugging it? We can bike it. We're good. Well, there's something to be said for stealth. I mean, I, I'll walk with the uh, with the wagon. What are you guys all worried about? Why do we need stealth? I'm not worried. I'm just going to walk with the wagon, though. Yeah, I don't understand why we need stealth. Though. So you could ride your horse with the wagon. I could, I could, but if yeah. I'm going to go back into it, I kind of don't want to bring my horse with me. Okay. Uh, just reminding you, you do get combat advantages being on horseback. That's true, but I want to take care of my... Well... Why don't you bring the horse... Yeah, I'll, I'll ride, you're right. I'll ride the horse. That's fine. I'll, I'll ride on the wagon. That makes sense. All right. And are we are we bringing armaments, I assume? I'm, I'm armored up. <clears throat> sure, I guess wear all my armor as we're walking. Yeah, well, I um, gotta bring just an armor nice. to a exploration fight. Anyways. Yep. I'm just good. maybe I'll just keep my lower half stuff on and then I'll uh if it gets too hot or anything like that then I can kinda stay cool and then if, if I need to suit up I'm halfway there to suiting up. Sorry, your light stuff you wanna keep on. Just take no, like my lower my my lower body stuff. So just the shin guards. Yeah. Okay. 
So you won't have any protection of your main body then? Not until I put it on. Okay, just making sure I know who's got armor on, who doesn't have armor on. All right, <clears throat> so I'm just going to uh, just adjust things here. All right, Sir Luke, you're wearing your armor, your knight armor, or my knight armor. Yep. Because you have two different suits of armor, right? Yeah, yeah. So. But I like the knight armor. Okay, cool. Senate, you're suited up. Mm-hmm. And Portland, you're dressed in your traditional garb, so you yeah. get your you get your armor built in. All right, <clears throat> and um, yeah, uh, the sun comes up and. Uh, the shadows uh, as you head away you're moving through forested land again uh, I'll remind you just of of what that looks like right um, there's a bit of a path right there is a way people go it's wide enough it has some some ruts in it from carts that have been brought that way but it's not really cleared right it's just the fact that it's a well used path that winds its way through its uneven ground and and the like um the men lead the horses uh they're not really riding in the cart uh, except senate who does who's uh kind of perched up on the cart there um but eventually the cart gets stuck and it relies on you guys to help lift the the wheels and and things like that out of a rut or over a route or something like that so it's it's not a very um yeah it's not a very fast trip that's for sure and um <clears throat> you make your way along in this this wilderness uh it's cooler temperatures thankfully the humidity of the summer has given way uh the colors of the the foliage uh are varied you get a lot of red and a lot of orange uh mixed in with some browns and yellows and um it's rather pretty uh get some small mammals scurrying off in the in the brush and the like and uh yeah you seem to to be making making good headway and it's a relatively uh uneventful first kind of half of the day as you slowly make your way uh to these ruins at some point well i'll stop there if there's something that any of you wanted to do on the way i mean being uh, somewhat elevated i'd be trying to keep an eye out as best i could Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, other than that, it strikes me as a good time for conversation if there's any to be had. Yeah, and of course, any of you that have wilderness survival would know um, making noise, having conversation and stuff like that, that's a good way of making sure you don't uh, have animals just, you know, get startled by your approach or anything like that, uh, particularly bears and, and the like. You're so, coming. sorry, go ahead. No, I just said they'll hear us coming. That's right. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. Good. And I mean, there's enough creaking and stuff, and you know, the horses clomping, and they got bells on the horses to to make some noises, and the jingle of their straps and whatnot as they pull the the cart. Um, you do get you guys do happen upon a. Um, it looks like a, a deer has been killed by. Uh, then the that the way the the kill is does it, uh, any of you guys have any sort of uh, wilderness survival or? I believe I do. Um, yeah, or I guess Lex's nose could tell you things as well. Yeah, I've got wilderness survival thirty-five. Okay. Anybody else have it? Like, are you thinking? Are you thinking track by scent? Uh, yeah, like your olfactory ability would let you recognize a scent of some sort. Okay, I can try. Uh, I'll I'll wait. If anybody else can come up with something, great. If not, I'll use uh, object read. Okay. I also have wilderness survival. There you go. Less than three hundred and fifty-five. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hold on. Seems like a typo. Yeah, I think that's a typo. <laughs> yeah, it is. There we go. No, you just rolled really, really well. But you did roll a thirty-five, which is your actual skill. Yeah. So you're still yeah. you still did succeed. Uh, yeah. So Portland and Sir Luke, you kind of examine it. This thing was definitely um, torn apart by wolves. Um, yeah, 
Lex, you smell dog pretty much, but you don't know if it's you or if it's something else. But um, <laughs> yeah, but this is definitely there's a wolf pack around somewhere. This is a kill that they oh, they made. The kill. Uh, it probably looks like it was done last night. All right. Or near dawn, but you guys have traveled for quite some time, so. All right, let's proceed. Gordo's like, well, what you make of it? Uh, it's a uh, wolf pack. Probably the last, you know, 12 to, you know, 9 to 12 hours, I suppose. Hmm. And, you know what, just to, just to be thorough, maybe I will go use object read. Okay, cool. Just in case. So if you hop over to your ability, you will see yep. what it says there. And object read. Where is that? Further down, I suppose, eh? Yeah. Just above telepathy there. Yep. Yeah. So it's going to cost you six. And... Yep. You guys will pause for about ten minutes as you as you try to pick up some impressions off of the thing. I'm gonna put the rest of my armor in. Yeah, so you can't really pick up much. Nope. All right. Well, we tried. Yeah. All right. Well, let's continue. Yeah. All right. So you guys uh, make your way. You do find evidence. There's bear droppings, other things like that along the way. You definitely moved uh, well into a, a wilderness trek. And um, <clears throat> the day uh, progresses. Eventually, the path through the... Um, well, you notice that the ground starts to become firmer. And... Um, and uh, start to starts to do a bit of a climb, and um, the undergrowth gives way to what appears to be um, kind of broken, broken rock of some sort, flat rock with uh, like plants growing in the cracks of the rocks, and eventually the the trees kind of um, become sparser more and more shrubbery than than trees as you realize that you have happened upon uh the remnants of an old road uh the the pavement and asphalt um heaved and and buckled but it's definitely more of a highway uh, like a raised ground than uh than the path through the wilderness that you took before you kind of come on to the come onto it at an angle and straighten out and begin to follow this old road uh, as you come over a rise you can see ahead of you what's left of a pre-rift city the uh, most of it is uh, is forest just like their surrounding area however sticking up from the trees above the trees are the skeletons of of taller office buildings that were once office buildings um, that of course now you can see through as the glass and concrete facades have fallen off of the um, the girders and things like that um, you can see what's left of um, you know the twisted remains of, of electrical towers and things like that and uh, and the like um, and it all uh, kind of you're all, you're on a bit of a rise and you can look down into a into the valley of, of where the city used to be. So uh, the only thing again sticking up over the trees are these particular um, particular ruins. But you know that underneath that, the canopy of the forest, you're going to find uh, smaller buildings and and possibly old vehicles and things like that, all overgrown and rusted out. And uh, they they kind of stop and look over at you and say we just follow this road a ways and uh well it's kind of where there used to be a bridge that's where we uh 
that's where we make our offering. There used to be a bridge. Yeah, it collapsed. Probably a long time ago when the rifts came. Mm. All right. Cool. So you continue along, and um, and the road begins to take a, a rather wide curve. After about a half an hour, you come to this rather wide curve that begins to elevate up, and uh, it, it uh, makes its way up on kind of raised up land as though the the ground was was purposefully elevated that way to some sort of bridge or overpass and uh at the edge there looking out over again the expanse of the city is a uh where people have taken slabs of concrete and built a very simple altar the largest flattest piece resting on two chunks that have been set on edge kind of like a very wide flat table it's covered with um with the remains of past sacrifices blood stains and the like and there are bones scattered around however the most disturbing thing that you see is that on sticks by the by this altar are humanoid skulls with the the rebar almost is yeah that they're they're rebar they're not really sticks they're rebar um pushing through the top of the skull so the skulls are just kind of suspended on the on the rebar there that's that's not great do we know what kind of humanoids these are uh you could try to examine them if you have a medical skill or some sort of biology or botany or anthropology or something. I guess botany wouldn't really work, but, but uh, well, I mean, there's probably some plant like DBs around, right? Um, but uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, if you had anything that would tell you that you could use to examine them. Uh, let's see, I've got uh, anthropology. Yeah, anthropology could work. I also got paramedics, but I think anthropology is probably the way to go. Sure. I mean, I've got impressions again. I might be able to figure out something about how this well, went down. We don't know what these VCs are. Yeah, you could try to you could try to do an object read on them. Sure. So we'll start with the impression, and it's what two d six minutes. That's right. You can roll a two d six if you want. Much faster this time. Yeah, you're a little bit more practiced, I suppose. Will they have a scent on them? Uh, you can, you, you know, can, you're not. you can oh, roll that. All right. So your impressions check. Um, yeah. So you get the general alignment of its last owner. Um, I don't know who owns a skull, but we'll say the, the person who put it there, uh, is no, the pilot. Yeah. The pilot. Yeah, uh, the person who put the skull on the on the rebar uh, is definitely evil. Their emotional state is um, kind of hate-filled. Um, the object's general purpose is to invoke fear, <laughs> and uh, the owner of the skull is still living. Um, Again, not the person whose skull it is, but the person who put the skull there. Who previously possessed the skull, yes. And uh, definitely whatever put it there is supernatural. I will start passing that along. Yeah. Uh, The item is not enchanted or uh, containing any sort of supernatural force. Uh, But... um, yeah, these are the. This is what you get off the one skull that you touch. Mm-hmm. You can now roll to see if you get images of isolated events which have happened in the past from this brief snippets, and the like, or you can stop yeah. your choice. No, let's let's do it. Let's see what we got. Okay. See if we can land Senate some nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Oh sure. So. <laughs> oh sure. Bring on the horror. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. 
So, um, what you, uh, you get, um, yeah, you get images and snippets and glances of the previous owner of the skull and others close to that owner. Uh, again, the owner, we're considering the person who put the skull on the thing, but I would consider that the person whose skull it is, is a person close to the owner. Um, and so you have a terrible vision of a, of a person on their knees, um, just in absolute horror, screaming as two gigantic um, spiked clawed hands come forward. One grabs the, uh, the man by his chest, the other grabs onto the head and just twists and pulls like uh pulling the head and part of the spinal column out um uh, this skull does have a little bit of the spine still on it although much of it is has kind of degraded um and you kind of get a, a panning up from the ground you see giant three-toed feet plated shins uh with a sort of leathery armor hide spiked knees uh, moving up to a, a muscular chest, um, looking up into the sky sort of thing. You can see sky behind it because you're looking at a much larger creature, uh, well-muscled, very broad, clawed hands and spiked joints. But what you see are two snake-like creatures um, with single eyes, pale white eyes that glow with uh, like tentacles with mouths almost as you continue to pan up and see the hideous um, spiked face and uh, toothed maw of some demonic creature with large, wide, um, almost like antlers coming out of the side of it. Uh, just even the image uh, fills you with dread as you look at this. Okay, well, in that case, I'm probably going to start swearing okay you do have like one more watering. object read option oh you, i know you can spend an additional four isp with no guarantee of success to get yeah. to view the present of the current owner okay uh, yeah, we'll try it because it seems okay so take off an additional four isp you are too disturbed Aww. by the image and you kind of you just can't hold it all right, I will uh, convey what it is I saw and ask if anyone is familiar with. Well, you also have possibly have a lore, right, that you could use. Yeah, that's true. Oh, you described I've got monster lore as well, so can I roll as well? Yeah, and that's Portland true. and Lex may have a lore as well after he describes the thing. I don't have any lore. I'm not no. trying to talk the numbers. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, once he starts describing it, Portland, you know immediately that this thing is a thornhead demon. Yeah, all I have oh, is right, magic I got and information. This might be, yeah. I don't yeah. think this is magic exactly. That's fine. No, it's not <clears throat> magic. What can you tell us about thornhead demons? Sure, let me just check my GM. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> so they are... Uh, they are terrible, hideous things that are thought to have come through the uh, Detroit Windsor Rift area uh, way back in the Dark Age, between you know the coming of the rifts and the current era here. Uh, but they're found all over North America. They um, are rather territorial, claiming an area as its domain or hunting ground. And yeah, anybody that enters its domain, um, which it is ranges anywhere from ten to forty mile radius. Um, is considered to be fair game. And the thorn so head a... typically layer at significant geographic features like megaliths, hills, caves, trees, ruins, usually near the center do I know, of its territory. Do I know if it's evil or not? That's um, a demon. I can, yeah. I can tell you definitively it is evil. Well, Cyber Knight, your time has come. Though... Not what you wanted... Up, 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 I will point out this seems like a territorial boundary marker. 
Sure. I also want to see his nexus point still, so I'm still going to get Wayne. Yeah, so <laughs> for those of you that can detect nexus points in light, I just want to see your range on that. Right. Abilities. Um, you just opened my page. <laughs> I did. I, was, I, I wanted to okay, see your range. It's 10 miles. Yeah. yeah. 10 miles. Uh, mm -hmm. So sense ley line, sense, yeah. And yeah. yeah, you can follow a ley line to as many nexus points as there are. Yeah, yeah. so you can roll to see if you can find a ley line there, Portland. What would I, would I roll then? It would, would be on your skills. On There's yeah. just, yeah, it'll be on your skill list. Uh, land navigation. Recognize pre rift energy. I don't see anything with ley lines on this. Oh, since ley line nexus, I got sorry. Yeah, since ley line would be not the nexus though. No success. Yeah, but you rolled for your sensing ley line nexus. What am I rolling? Since it's ley line? Yeah. You're looking for the ley line first. Um, Once you find the see. ley line. Nope. Yeah. Nothing. You can't you can't sense it where you are right now. So All right. you would have to move further into the ruins. Sounds good. Let's do that. Well, I mean, regardless of the whether or not this thing's territorial, I mean, it's evil. It's, it's killed this human, this person, and it's harming other people. Too. Well, the, we there's it. more than one skull. Well, there's more than yeah. one humanoid That's skull. It. Yeah. But is, it, is, it doing, is it doing that because things are trespassing in its area? I mean, if there's anything going going on back in the village, obviously invading that area, obviously, you know, we'd see it as evil. But if this thing is staying to its region, yeah, it's not doing anything wrong. It's just protecting well, its territory. They're territorial. It's nature. It's also going to probably expand its territory too. Uh, not I think you're, I think you're making an assumption there, though. That's, that's a, a pretty very, big well, assumption there. I mean, yeah, that's like, regardless, it's evil and it's killed people, and it needs to so, be dealt with. So now, just because it's evil, it needs to be killed. Is you're saying? Even though it has not, you know, people have been idiots to do this and maybe invade its territory. Okay, well, why. okay. Yeah. But it did, uh, first of all, it doesn't, this, we can't assume that they invaded its territory knowingly. Uh, even still, it's evil and it's killed people who are innocent. I'm sorry, can I just, real quick, my impression initially was that the skull knew the creature that mounted the skull. Is that... Was that what uh, I, am, am it I, knew I, that it was absolutely right? terrified of it. Oh, okay. It didn't know it personally. Okay. You're, you're, it just was looking up at the thing as it grabbed hold of the man and removed his head from his body. Yes. Um, there are other skulls. If we have the time, I'd say you, you're looking to... at about a half dozen skulls around. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think... can, I can try and read more of them, but I'm, starting to think we're just going to keep seeing this well we i'm going to keep seeing the same thing if anything at all yeah that's kind of traumatic and i think we already kind of know the story so yeah if you uh, want to kill this thing sure here. i'll just want to find this nexus we're here the altar's here we can put the offering and then we can head back or, I don't think we need to go and antagonize something else it's, it's oh, i'm not trying to antagonize so i just want to I want to just find this nexus. I'm not here to deal with this whatever thing, this thorn bitch. I I've got to go and deal with it. I just I have to. I have no other choice. It's just the way it is. It occurs to me that I'm pinching the bridge of my nose in real life, and I should probably communicate that because <laughs> it's probably pretty representative of. Uh, what, what oh, you see, back? you know, I was just about to say I can appreciate. That's okay. that's what it looks like. At least that's what Senate saw in his <laughs> mind's uh, eye. I was about to say I can. Why does it have? And Portland would why know are that. It, why are it its knees? Mm -hmm. Why? That's what? like un, Look at its knees. That's like an unnecessary amount of just grabbiness. Okay. Yeah. It's the knees, eh? That's what's doing it for you. Well, it's the knees that are just off-putting. The rest of it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's. Pretty much anything I'd expect to see while you know trouncing around in it's not like, it's the not Diablo like franchise. Hours. Anyways, so that's yeah, what he describes to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
Oh, that sounds terrible plan. So are you guys in? You guys want to join us to join the, the men? The men are kind of uh, very quiet uh, as they stand by the steadying the horses and <laughs> and are and and I'll I'll Bob, look at them and, and just start unloading your offering. Um, we've got some. We're, we're figuring our shit out real quick. Just the less okay. time you have to spend here, the better. Uh, gentlemen. Would you be able to take my horse back? I'm going to go in on foot. I don't want it, uh, this thing to harm my horse. Bob speaks up okay. and, and kind of looks at the other men and steps forward a little bit. Says, takes off his hat, holds it over his chest. Uh, with all due respect, you aren't actually going into the ruins to to look for what what Mister Senate here just described, are you? I'm not going in to look for it. I'm going to find the nexus point. Yes, I am. Yeah. Never mind. He is. <laughs> I'm here for science. It's the story of how we get eaten. <laughs> it could very well be. Uh, I just, uh, respectfully, we were hoping that we would have that escort back, too. Oh, well, I'd... Uh... I'd, I'd hold off on that because apparently, well, DJ Cyber Knight, DJ Cyber Knight over here is going to be uh, it's dropping an EP, a little bit. Wiki, wiki. Uh, I want to just start. I want to just start unloading some of the the boxes and things and just kind of like putting them at the front of the altar. Okay, so you uh, you start doing that. The other men uh, see you kind of take the lead there, Lex, and and kind of begin to snap out of their their haze. Uh, figuring that, you know, busying themselves will help them deal with the terror that they've just <laughs> encountered vicariously through Senate's description. Um, so they begin well, to help unload. Well, if back, I will go in and uh, deal with it. So, given the perceived size of the thing I looked at, it's how magic. tall, how tall, roughly, is this thing? 10 to 12 feet tall. 10 to 12 feet tall. So, yeah. I will look at Sir Luke and say, seemingly, there's a decent chance that if I were standing on your head, it would still be about as tall, if not taller. Probably not taller. About the same. And Portland, you know that it is capable of, um, it has innate magical abilities. Uh, oh. It's two tentacles... Uh, the bite of those tentacles can inflict magical, uh, I don't know, effects. Uh, at the same time, they can also cause paralysis by their their look, or petrification by their look. By their look. <laughs> yeah, like they 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 can looking into their eye. The eyes of the tentacles can petrify you. So while I think you would make an excellent statue. And while I appreciate that you are compelled to address this threat, do you think that there may be a better way than just rushing headlong? I'm willing to listen to a proposal, but ultimately this thing needs to be eliminated so it doesn't harm anybody else. I understand that. And I would rather see people go unhurt if the option presents itself. But this is not a rhino bison. This is this is this is Cthulian in its face tentacles. Cthulian what? Yes. What's Cthulian? I don't know yeah. what that is. Neither do I. I don't know what kind of game you're playing. That's it. It's a kitchen sink game. We're sliding around a bit. Um, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I find I find sick. the more face tentacles something has, in my experience, the worse it is. But we see it's it's killed six people, and so it's it's harming people. It is. No one's disputing that at this point, right. necessarily. So we're already here. If we have a plan, I'm okay with that. I just, but I, I, I need to do this, regardless of whether I live or die. I, I, I that's just part of my code. Okay. I mean, I'm happy to try and help. 
don't exactly know how this is going to play, though. I mean, I get it. You're a very confident-looking warrior. I confidence, mean, whether it's confidence or not, I mean, it's it's a you described it. It's terrifying. I mean, I don't know that I can beat it, but I have to try. I think, Luke, though, if you keep walking through these through these lands, finding things that are harming humans, you're you're just going to be killing everything that you come across or you know, engaging everything that you come across. Yeah, probably. Like, That's kind of what mean, we do. These, do you think that this thing would have killed, this, killed these humans, brought the skulls back here, put on stakes? Or do you think, I think they're humans who would have gone in to investigate these ruins and it's just marking its territory. Again, regardless of whether or not that's true, it's still murdering people. It's still killing innocent people. I mean, I understand protecting the innocent, but at the same time, it's very clearly marking out. Right. But the problem is, and with respect, you said but. There's no but. There can't be a but. You, know, you, you, can't, you can't justify evil. Just can't. Um, you hear a terrible... Uh, bleeding sound and uh, a sort of gurgle and thud as the men bring the cow over to the uh, altar and slit its throat. Um, yeah, the 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 animal falls over onto the the altar there, and they kind of work at lifting its legs and kind of making sure that the the rest of the body is kind of on the altar as the blood continues to spill and flow over. I'm going to resist the urge to point out the nature of the now victimized animal and how the Cyber Knight is not addressing the victimized animal. Well, I just literally just happened now, so my response is going to be, if we are able to deal with this thing, if we're able to eliminate it, I mean, don't know if we can, but we don't have to have this happen again. They could, they could live their lives and they don't have to be fearful of what's living there. We should get I mean, going, me, says Gordo. The blood will attract me, we, whatever comes for it, I'm sure. Well then, why don't we back off and at least try and get a look to confirm what I saw. Okay. Because I, I've been wrong before, I think, maybe. Listen, I, again, I, I want to stress, I don't want to run into danger if I ha have to, but I mean, regardless of whether it's dangerous or not, it's still, I, I, I have no other choice. It's something I... I, I, I also have reservations about leaving our friends unescorted. No, and, and that makes sense. I would have no problem escorting them back. But once I do, I'm coming back. Well, let's clear out of here for now. Okay, I agree. But I will be coming back. With that, we'll just... I'll start moving away. All right. So you guys decide to uh, escort them back then? Is that the plan? Yeah, I'll escort them back. Portland, that's your... You're doing that as well? Well, do we want to watch to see if this thing comes? Right? Yeah, of course I do. If it is actually what we think it is? Yes. Cool. So that was kind of the idea I was putting forward. Well, Information gathering, you know. I think it's important to escort them back, though, too. Oh, absolutely. But we can get plenty enough far away that we're free and clear of this thing. If nothing else, we can get a glimpse of it just to confirm and then get them back to safety. I think that's a fairly balanced and prudent sort of approach to the situation. Okay. And then once we get eyes on Call the uh, on the creature, then we'll yep. go and catch up with them. And who knows? Maybe uh, maybe Lex will be able to pick up its scent and work with that in the future. So I'll kind of give him a nod. I go, okay, I I could work with that. Yeah. So we're we're gonna clear out. I think. All right. 
Cool. Where are you going to then? Uh, more than likely back the way we came, but in such a way as to be able to maintain some kind of line of sight on the altar. All right. Cool. So you guys. Do we just want to? Do we just want to go to like, you know, thousand yards or something like that, and use like scopes on our weapons and things to, to watch? If you have scopes on your weapons, that's great. I do. Yeah. Yeah, you guys do have a bit of range. Okay. Okay. Like I've got an SDC weapon, but no scope listed, so. I'll have to rely on you guys. Well, if it ever comes to a fight, I'll throw you my, my weapon. and uh, I did, Again, did, to be clear, we have civilians here who are not yeah. armed for this sort of conflict. So we're just... No, I'm game. not saying that we're fighting now. I'm just saying that if it came to it, I would do that. Okay. okay. So, I, I do um, appreciate that. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay. Got to keep them safe. All right. You guys withdraw then and uh, try to get as far back from the altar area as you can um, using scopes, distanced ways of observing, that sort of thing. The men are very nervous. They, uh, they kind of try to uh, keep the horses facing in the direction of leaving as you guys want to uh, wait and see what comes. And... Um, Time goes Could I use, by. Um, oh, sorry, boy. how many horses are how many horses are here? Uh, there would be the the two that are pulling the cart and uh, Sir Luke's. Nine. I mean, I could use empathic transmission to try and calm them, just to keep them quiet, if nothing else. But that yeah. has a limited duration, and we have no idea when this thing's going to get here. Yeah, and horses tend to be sensitive to things. Yeah, so if they start to get spooked, I will use empathic transmission, and I'll shoot for, let's say, trust. And as I do it, I'll go and I'll try to manually calm them as well, just to demonstrate mm. what it is they're trusting. Okay, cool. Arian is fine. He won't be that worried. He's well-trained. Well, it's not just your horse I'm worried about. No, I get that's just noting that that's the case. Okay. All so right. What do your what do your elf eyes see? So you guys are there. Um, I'm gonna actually need Lex to give me a uh, sense supernatural beings skill check. Sense. Sense supernatural beings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Success. You are successful. So, um, this is that sort of innate ability that dog boys have. Uh, you are. You basically, it's just like you're sensing magic and psionics, but you are able to pick up the distinctive psychic sense scent rather of the supernatural and um, you can almost taste it you can feel it it's like magic in the air sort of thing and the range on this for you is um, what range 100 feet yeah and so you sense it and then you see it. Anybody have sixth sense? Oh yeah. Cool. I think I thought I do. Yeah, you can take off two ISP then as your sixth sense triggers, and a creature um, begins to make its way through um, some of the underbrush that's nearby, approaching your location. Sixth sense means it's within ninety feet here, but you don't have a clear. Sorry, our our location or the. Within, the altar's location. Within 90 feet of you. Our location. Within 90 feet of you, that's your sixth sense. 100 feet of him allows him to sense it. Crap. And... 
and that's where we'll leave this one off for now. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this story so far. If you like it, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out. And um, yeah, find out what happens to Senate Portland, Sir Luke, and um, Lex next time. I'm Magnum Pi. I'm here with Teku Golgotha, Vahilo, and Dark Templar. And we are Initiative Zero. <laughs>